Okay, I'll get started here. Um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining uh, this year's or the first of 2021, the, the YEG Edmonton uh, Tableau user group meeting. Um, just to let everybody know, this meeting will be recorded. Uh, it's currently being recorded, actually, and will be available through um, the Tableau, uh, Tableau YouTube channel. Um, but I'll post the link in the uh, forum if anybody is interested in taking a look at it or having replaying it. Uh, hopefully in the near future, we can go back to doing these in person so we can physically meet uh, many of you. And All right. So just a quick introduction. I know there's some probably no new faces in here or names. Uh, my name is Hins, uh, Hins Chan, and I'm the uh, Tableau, uh, the administrator for the Edmonton Tableau user group. Um, I work at Onware. Um, for those that don't know, Onware is a software developer here in Edmonton. And in addition to kind of custom software development, we also develop and maintain a collaborative contract administration software. Uh, we're also a Tableau reseller and we do business intelligence consulting and development. Um, while I do use Tableau for business purposes, I also do like to do use it for um, you know some fun things and other personal projects as well. So here are a few things that I've done um, on the left here on my screen. Uh, there's a COVID-19 uh, dashboard that I first started to do last year it's retired so it's not updated as you can see there's only 7,000 total cases so that's obviously very outdated um so that this was one of the first things that i did just to like kind of practice with uh building dashboards and trying to make it look a little bit more fancy um as well in the middle here is uh, my golf tournament dashboard so every summer spring summer uh i'm actually the commissioner of our golf tournament and season so you know, um, it, it, this is like kind of the scoreboard. And at the end of the year, we have a, a giant tournament to, uh, you know, determine the winner. Uh, on the right here is a Tableau um, license comparison uh, dashboard that I put into pub, uh, Tableau Public. And we actually use that. Uh, we embed this onto our website on onward.com. So you can do a, so you can see the comparison of each of the licenses, uh, the creator, the explorer, and the viewer. Um, I don't want to take up too much more time, but a few things I want to mention um, before we go through our agenda is that we're always looking for volunteer speakers and co-leaders for this user group. So uh, I know I have, I've seen some very interesting work that's being done in the Edmonton, Edmonton and surrounding community. So please don't be shy uh, on showing off uh, kind of the work and how you've been deploying Tableau within your organization. I'm sure everybody else would be curious to see it as well. So please reach out um, so that you can show uh, sh show everybody how you're using Tableau to see and understand your data. All right, so just to go over the agenda real quick here. Um, today, we have some wonderful speakers from um, Onware, Fraser Gallup, um, as well as uh, Tableau. I know uh, there are some new members of the Tableau team, so they'll be doing a little quick introduction. I don't think we're going to be using the entire one and a half hours today, so uh, we will probably be able to give everybody some time back in their day. Uh, we might even skip break just to, you know, give a little bit more time back. So uh, but we'll play that by ear. Um, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. If you do have any questions, just please use the chat box and then we can um, read them out uh, at the end of uh, the presentations. Uh, after, so after Fraser talks and answers questions, we might have a little bit of an interactive bit for some prizes. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Kahoot, we have some uh, Tableau swag as well as some Onware swag to give away. So uh, stay tuned for that. All right. And I think without further ado, I think I can hand it over to Fraser to start. All right. Hi, everybody. You can hear me okay, Hens. You can be my sound yeah. check guy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, there we go. Well, getting ahead of myself. Okay. Um, so today, um, we, were, we were not really sure what uh, we wanted to talk about. Um, 
they're looking for volunteers for this. I, I got voluntold, I think that I, I had to give a presentation. Um, so kind of chatting in the office here, um, you know, we were, we were saying like, what are we talking with customers uh, with about lately? Um, and so kind of the thing that came up was talking about, um, you know, authentication and, and how to set up and how to best set up uh, like a Tableau online environment and kind of taking a step back from that, um, we looked the, the bigger thing was governance and talking about like, you know, your data and your content on your Tableau server. Um, so, so why is this like an interesting topic um, to, to take your time? Um, well, you know, in a few days we can, we can connect to data sets. We can, we can create dashboards and we can deliver insights um, pretty easily with Tableau. But, but what comes next? Um, you know, it's really important to think about a framework for how we can um, deploy and expand Tableau inside of organizations. And, and the key to that is, is really governance. So I'm, I'm gonna get into a couple of different points of governance, um, but I wanna give some background first. So uh, for those that don't know me, um, I'm Fraser. Uh, you can see me there at Tableau Conference 2015. I'm, I'm really yearning for those uh, days right now. So. Uh, you know, maybe if it's not this year, for sure next year, I can't wait to get back to Tableau Conference and, and the community. Um, Hins already mentioned about Onward a little bit. Uh, it's actually like 10 years now since uh, we became a Tableau partner. So that's a, an interesting anniversary for us to, to have this year and, and just how things have changed, uh, you know, since, since we originally got started. Um, so let's, let's start off. Um, and, and let's let's think about a, tap, a typical Tableau online deployment. Um, not much different from Tableau server, but I'm gonna kind of talk more about Tableau online um, today. So most companies have a hybrid data architecture, which means that you, you're gonna have data in pub, public cloud environments like Microsoft Azure, uh, Google, uh, Amazon, you know, th those kind of publicly hosted environments. You have your on-premises environments um, that are within your network. And uh, there's even people that are doing private cloud environments. And that's where you'd be you know, hosted in Microsoft Azure, but it's not available to the general public. You, know, you use a VPN to get to that environment and it's a little bit more secured. So you, you kind of have data all over the place. Um, you know, there's, there's the, your external sites, like your, you know, whether it's a Salesforce or you know, these web hosted, uh, applications that you have data on, um, in addition to your internal data sources, and, and your users could really be anywhere. So Tableau Online is a, a you know a really good solution, so you can get that anytime, anywhere access to your data. But you want to make sure that that's done in a secure and a managed way. So, um, kind of with that kind of spirit, like how how do we do that? How do we get there? Um, so one of the things that uh, was actually kind of first introduced two years ago in Tableau conference around that time frame is, is Tableau Blueprint. And, and you know, I think a lot of people maybe still aren't totally familiar with Blueprint and, and what exactly it is. Um, so I'm gonna play a little video and hopefully the technology will agree with me today and this will all just work. So I'm gonna kick it off and, and hope this works. You want to be a data-driven organization. Putting facts over instincts will help you find new solutions and opportunities for your business. But how do you know the questions to ask, plans to make, and steps to take to get your entire organization to embrace data? Tableau Blueprint answers these questions and more. We've combined our expertise and the best practices of thousands of Tableau customers, creating a step-by-step -step methodology to help all of your people become data-driven. Tableau Blueprint gives you the tools to define where you want to go, identify who should be involved, and how to develop the critical capabilities you need to make it happen. Blueprint will help you establish a foundation of governance, balancing flexibility and control to enable responsible access and use of data. You'll build agility to keep up with changing business needs as you deploy, monitor, and maintain a secure and scalable analytics environment. Increase proficiency through defined learning paths for people at all analytic skill levels and measure the impact of turning data into insights. 
create and engage your community of dedicated users with communications, activities, and support programs that encourage and recognize using data. With Tableau Blueprint, you can develop a comprehensive approach to spreading analytics and informed decision-making company-wide. Are you ready to make the most of your data and your people? Get started with Tableau Blueprint today. All right, uh, let's go back to PowerPoint here. So, I'm um, oh, sorry, I got ahead. Um, the video looks really cool. That's why I want to show the video instead of trying to like give an overview myself. Um, you know, Tableau Blueprint is essentially a collection of best practices. It's not a product that Tableau is selling. There's no cost for it. It's totally free. Um, really, you can go to the Tableau website. Um, you can Google Tableau Blueprint and, and get all the content. It's all available for you there. Um, there's a PDF that you can actually download. It's about 250 pages long. Um, and, and it really has like, it's, it's, it's a guidelines on and a learning journey to, to kind of come up with the best practices and, and how you can apply those in your organization. Um, there's also a Tableau Blueprint Planner, which is like an Excel template that you can kind of fill out and, and it becomes like a living document as, as you kind of work through Blueprint and, and do your learning experience. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a really great framework. Um, and, and we're spending a lot of time kind of digesting the material and, and, and talking about this with customers. Um, so it's, it's definitely worth something uh, to check out. So kind of, it, it, like I said, it's 250 pages and, and you know, it's, it would take a really long time to go through anything in detail here. Um, so I'm going to focus down uh, for today for this session. So the first thing um, we want to look at um, is just this uh, idea of governance, like I said at the beginning. Because I think this is one of the most important pieces and it's kind of an ongoing theme throughout your Tableau journey. So we're going to look at um, the governance and then within governance, um, we're going to even go further. So, you know, one of the things that we're, we're talking about um, when, when you're adopting analytics inside of an organization is, is really maintaining security and integrity of your data. Um, and a big piece of that is, is just trust in the data. So, you know, if people are you know, they've, they've got their norms, they're receiving their Excel reports every day or every week, and, and that's what they're used to and that's what they trust. So, you know, we, we can make a really cool dashboard and show them some insights. Um, but we've got to build up that trust with them. And, and, you know, lots of times we get into situations where we deploy a new data source and it, it might break a dashboard. We lose some trust at that case. Or, you know, say we do something wrong and, and we expose sensitive information to the wrong users. Again, we can lose trust. So um, we want to make sure that we're planning ahead of time how we're going to do things, how we're going to deploy things, and then we can gain that trust. Um, so part of that is, is defining standards, um, you know, your process, your, your policies around your data, how you're going to publish it, who's going to be able to see it. And, and that's really going to make life easier for you as like a, an administrator uh, because you just follow your procedure. And hopefully everybody that's a creator in your organization is also following the procedure. Um, the other big advantage is that it makes your content more discoverable for users. So your users are able to, to you know, find what they're looking for and, and, and access it. So today, um, what we're going to focus in on is, is just content management and authorization. So two uh, pieces of like, there's 12 different slices there. I'm going to look at two of them. Um, the first one is, 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 is along those lines, it's authentication. So you know, this is really one of the very first things that you want to think about when you're setting up your Tableau environment. How are your users going to access Tableau? So, um, you know, typically it's a username and password. Uh, so this is kind of uh, an interesting thing that uh, I thought I'd, I'd pull up here. This is a, an XKCD comic. Um, they're by Randall Monroe. And, you know, it's kind of fitting because uh, he was actually at a Tableau conference two years ago. He gave a, a keynote. Um, so we got to see him and, and uh, read his book and, and that kind of stuff. So um, let's, let's talk about authentication. Um, so inside of Tableau Online, there are um, two different kind of authentication types you can deal with. One of them is Tableau authentication, uh, which is really easy since it's the default. Um, and uh, then you can also have one additional authentication method. So you can either choose Google 
or you can choose SAML. Um, and I'm gonna get into this and I'm actually gonna demo both of these for you. So the, the first one, uh, Google is, is pretty straightforward for Google authentication. SAML, um, it stands for Security Assertion Markup Language, um, whatever that means. It, it's an open standard for exchanging author, authentication information between different parties. So like if you're using Okta or OneLogin, which are popular third-party services, um, they're using SAML to talk to Tableau. The other one that's here is Office 365 Active Directory, which is becoming very popular within uh, organizations as a way to authenticate people. And it does work with Tableau. And I, I, you know, the funny thing is that I had knew, known that these authentication options existed for like years now. And I was kind of always hesitant to like take the plunge and look at it and say like, you know, how could we actually set this up and, and make it happen until I actually, you know, decided to go in and look at it. And I found that it's very easy. So I would suggest that, uh, you know, I'm gonna show you actually how we, how we set it up and it, it's gonna take, you know, all of 15 minutes or less here. Uh, one thing to note that um, Tableau authentication is the, the default. Tableau did send a notice out um, within the last month or so that they're going to be adding two-factor um, to Tableau authentication in the near future. So this is kind of one thing to keep in mind um, this is a timely thing to bring this up now, I think, because if, if two factors being introduced, you may want to consider switching if you're already using Google, you're already using Active Directory inside your organization, you may want to switch um, before that two factor comes into effect just to make things easier for your users. Um, so let's do uh, Google first, because that's, uh, that's the easier one. So let's, uh, let's switch over here. Um, so here is my Tableau online. I'm, I'm already logged in here. Um, so I'm logged in as myself. If I go over to settings and then to the authentication tab, um, you'll see I, I don't have anything set up except for the default uh, Tableau authentication. So I'm just gonna check off, enable an additional method and you can see Google's highlighted there and I'm done. That's all you have to do and you can enable Google authentication. So now I can, I can go over to my users here and I can say, I want to add a user. So when you add your user, now you actually have this option to choose. So I can say, I would like to add a user for Google authentication and just type in the email address. So I'm going to do that. And uh, I'm going to assign creator license because that's all I have. And that's it. So then um, anybody that's using uh, Google authentication, you'll be able to see from here, like which authentication they're using, Tableau versus Google, um, and you have the license. So let's open up uh, another browser window here and try it out and see if it works. So we'll go to online.tableau.com. Type in my email address. So you'll see after I type in my email address, um, something happened here. It actually took away the password box. Um, so it, it actually recognized already that this is a, a Google address and, and it didn't ask me for my password. So when I click on sign in, um, you're actually gonna see me get forwarded over uh, to Google authentication. Um, so you know it's, it's got that in there, I can go next. It's gonna ask for my password. Give me a second here get this out of my secure password vault. So I can paste that in there, go next. And you'll see you get redirected back to Tableau. Um, and now I'm signed into the Tableau site. I can access the, the content on the site, no problem. Um, so it was that easy. It, you know, it was a couple clicks and we got Google authentication working. Um, you know, back to speaking about two-factor, if you do have two-factor enabled, um, on your Google site, that will work the same as it does right now. Um, and so you, you'll have your two-factor authentication. So uh, yeah, that was, that was it. That's Google authentication. You know, I, I didn't time it, but it was, it was pretty quick to set that up. Um, the second one here is Office 365 Active Directory. Now this one is a little bit more work to set up, but not too much more. Oops, no, I do not want that. Away. Okay, so to do this demo, um, I'm going to come back here. I've already logged in here. 
to my uh, my Office 365 admin site. So this is where you have to start. Um, whoever sets up your, your Active Directory authentication obviously has to have administrator privileges on your Office 365 site. Um, and what they'll do is they'll they'll come in here to their, their, their management portal and there'll be this link uh, for Azure Active Directory. Um, so they can open that up. And um, so it, if they go under this is actually all documented online too you can you can go and google it it's it's, it's pretty easy um, but if you go under app, enterprise applications here you basically have to set up uh, an authorized tableau as an application in your active directory before you can connect it um, and so they've actually got it set up in here so if i just search for tableau you'll see tableau online is listed there and you can just uh, you click on it and say create and it'll take a few minutes and it'll actually create and set up your your active directory um, to do that now there's after that's done you'll see it in the list here since i did it earlier i'm just going to uh, bring up the one that i created previously um, basically it creates this application uh, you have to go to the single sign-on tab and uh, I'm going to just switch over here. I'm going to try to open these side by side. I'm going to switch to another Tableau site. So I just have another Tableau site here. Uh, I'm going to switch over to that one for this demo. So on, on this one here, um, you can see I've, I've already enabled it. I've, I've, I've selected uh, SAML. Um, really what the process is, is that you, once you select SAML here, you just have to upload a file. So you import this metadata file into Tableau online um, and copy and paste these URLs here. Um, so Microsoft actually gives you these URLs on the left. So you would really just take that one, copy it over, take that one, copy it over, um, and then download the certificate from the left from, from your uh, Microsoft uh, side and then upload it into Tableau. So really it's about four steps there um, to get that configured. It's not really much more than that. The only other um, kind of thing that uh, is a bit of a um, thing that you might wanna know on the Microsoft side here, um, there's an option here that's turned on by default um, right there. It's called user assignment required. And what that means is that you must uh, explicitly pick users in your active directory that would have access to Tableau online. Um, so if you were running like a very secure uh, Active Directory, you may want to turn that on. I, I think probably in most cases, you just want to set that to no, um, so that uh, you, you don't have to do that extra layer of setup um, to get into Tableau. Um, but same kind of thing uh, happens here. So you, you kind of set that up, uh, get your application configured, do the, the, the Tableau configuration. Um, oops, where did that go? Come on. Okay, and then again, same kind of process here. So from your users tab, um, you would just go add users, put in their email. I'm gonna add somebody else here since I'm already in here. And then say, use uh, Microsoft Online SAML authentication and then add them in. And the same kind of thing happens. Uh, you'll be able to see who's using Tableau authentication versus uh, Microsoft authentication. And uh, I'll show you the experience for that as well. So we'll just open another browser window here, go to online.tableau.com. Oops, sorry, let me close that. I have too many windows open. Try that again. There we go. So same kind of idea here. When I type in my my um, my onward.com email address, um, Tableau is already kind of recognizing that that this email address is associated with multiple sites. Um, so it actually gives me a site selection dropdown. This is only if you were associated with multiple sites. Um, but I'll pick the site that I'm going to log into. Hit sign in, and again you'll see it 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 knocks me over to the Microsoft sign in uh, box here. Um, I actually do have to type in my email address again. Unfortunately, this is a, a common thing with Microsoft sign in and, and other applications. It's not necessarily a Tableau thing. Uh, I can't remember my 
password. See, I do have two factor turned in on this one. So I just have to go and improve this on my phone. Once I complete that process, again, I'm locked in to Tableau. I have access to all my content. So, you know, like that really didn't take very long. Uh, you know, we successfully configured to, to do um, Active Directory sign-in. So I, I, you know, given that and, and kind of what we've learned with this in, in recent days, I'd say if you are using those kind of things in your organization, take the plunge, set it up. It, it really doesn't take that long. It's going to make things much easier for your users um, because then they don't have to set up a separate Tableau username and password and, and remember that um, aside from the, the credentials that they're already using. Um, so, so authentication, it's not too hard. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Um, content management. So, you know, now that your users are in your site, um, you know, you're going to have more and more people using your data every day. Your, your content really needs to be well organized um, so that people can discover, consume, create um, with confidence. So content governance involves, um, you know, just doing some process that, that helps to keep your content relevant, helps keep it fresh. Um, defining that consistent uh, organizational structure to be able to manage, you know, all the stuff that's on your Tableau server. Um, you know, one of the things, uh, you know, I, this happens to me quite often, you know, I'll say, you know, I created a dashboard for that, but where did I put it? Um, and then you have to start hunting through your Tableau server to try and find that one view that, you know, you, you know you've created and, and you want to use it again. Um, you know, sometimes you go through that process and you probably could have recreated the view from scratch. Um, so, you, you know, you really want to make your content as, as clearly organized as possible. Um, you know, we have one uh, customer, they've got 58 workbooks off of two uh, main data sources. Um, so, you know, it, it can really get to that uh, stage very quickly uh, on a Tableau deployment. So what we're going to do is uh, I want to just look at three different things. Um, one is authorization. One is projects, and and then the third one I'm going to touch briefly on is is sites. Um, I did put another comic comic here, so uh, you know, this this reminds me of my home organization. It's like I I always like want to know where everything is in the house, but it's it's like an impossible thing. So, um, so talking about authorization, um, you can assign individual users permissions to content on your Tableau server, no problem. This is not really a recommended approach. It, it can become really difficult to manage um, if, you're, if you're just you know, picking random pieces of, of content on your Tableau server and giving that to users. So really um, the way that you should be doing this is, is creating groups either locally on your Tableau server or importing it from your Active Directory. Um, that's a little bit more tricky to set up not much more, um, but you, you can actually have Tableau server um, or Tableau online kind of get your active directory groups and bring them in there for you as well as that group membership. Um, so there is possibilities to kind of set that kind of stuff up. Um, but one of the other things too is just kind of keep it simple. So, you know, if, if you have, um, you know, departments within your organization, sales, operations, accounting, executive board of directors, just create a group on your Tableau server for each of those. And, and put the people in the groups. Uh, you know, remember that you know people can belong to one or more groups. So you don't have to have like an exhaustive list of all the groups. You can have you know one guy in three different groups if that's what makes sense. Um, and if you keep it in line to your organizational roles, that's that helps keep it easier to manage and, and you know who should be where. Um, it, I don't. I don't really have a demo. Like I can. I can bring up the Tableau server, but it's. It. You know. That's really the the list is. You know. Kind of come up with the core departments that are going to be using your Tableau server to start. Kind of create those groups uh, as as the starting place and put those users in the groups. The second thing that um, we want to look at is 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 the projects. Um, and so this is kind of how you organize that Tableau server and the content on the server. So, you know, kind of continuing with the idea of functional groups in your organization, um, one good way to do this is to create um, root projects that align to those functional groups. So on your Tableau server, you can create like a, a root level project for sales, for operations, for accounting. Um, and then 
what you would do is you'd actually assign your user groups to those projects. So, you know, you'll have your sales user group tied to your sales project. And then what you can actually do is if you have like a creator in your sales team, um, you can actually delegate the authority to them so that they can create like sub projects underneath that top level sales project and organize them, you know, as that group really needs. Um, Long-term users of Tableau will, will kind of remember the days when we did not actually have the ability to nest projects on a Tableau server uh, and how happy everyone was when they added that feature. That was like, I think in, uh, not, not too long ago, anyway, it was at least, it was probably three or four years ago that that was introduced. Um, but you can have, you know, nested projects and uh, basically set permissions on the root project that sales one lock permissions to the to the root project so that anything that people are publishing underneath that will get those same permissions. That actually makes it easier for your, your creators and the people that are publishing because they don't necessarily have to remember or worry about how they're going to configure access to the stuff that they're publishing um, because you've already done that as, as, as an administrator um, and, and set up the Tableau permissions the right way. Um, the last one that I want to mention is, um, you know, lots of times we want to work with shared data sources. So um, we've, we've kind of taken two approaches for this in the past. One is to create like a project for the shared data sources. Uh, the other one would be just use the default project. It's already there. Um, and so, you know, any kind of data sources that were shared across groups, uh, we like to just kind of put them in that default project and, and have them available to, to multiple people. Um, the last thing I wanted to kind of touch on here was the idea of um, the, the sites. Um, so this is something that exists in a Tableau server environment, not in Tableau online. Um, so if you're running Tableau in-house, you can actually create multiple sites inside your Tableau server. There's the same thing as Tableau online. Um, you, you, when you go to Tableau online, that's a site. On, uh, it's just you don't have the ability to create new ones uh, without buying more licenses and, and having Tableau create it for you. Um, one of the advantages, probably the, the only advantage of setting up a separate site is that if you have sensitive content that needs to be completely isolated from the rest of your Tableau deployment, you could put that in a different site. Um, it's a it's a hard boundary, you know, like the users have to be set up differently, all your data sources have to be set up differently. Um, we've had customers that have went and said, Oh, this looks like a good idea. We're going to set up, you know, three or four different sites on our Tableau server. Um, they started to roll things out. And, and eventually they found that they do have data sources that they wanted to share across the different groups in their company. Um, and so because they set up multiple sites, they actually had to recreate those data sources on every site. They had to you know, do extracts over and over again for the exact same data across the sites. Um, so what they ended up doing was redoing their Tableau server, creating a single site, reorganizing it um, so that they could have those shared data sources. So I, that's why I wanted to mention this story. Um, it, you know, if you're starting out with Tableau and thinking about sites, think long and hard about it, you know, uh, and, uh, and don't necessarily jump into to making things too isolated because it can become a lot of work later on if you need to backtrack and, and change from that. Um, so like I mentioned at the beginning, Blueprint is like 250 pages in a PDF. There's, there's a lot of content there. Um, this was just like a very brief like uh, introduction to it. Um, so I wanted to like give you some information for kind of next steps. So the first link there, um, tableau.com slash learn slash blueprint is the kind of the blueprint homepage. If you kind of bring that up on your browser, you'll see that video that I played earlier and then you kind of get into the content. Um, the second um, thing that's really actually quite useful is the learning paths. So Tableau has created a ton of uh, this uh, these role-based learning paths to help your users kind of get proficient with the different elements and, and these best practices. Um, there, some of them are free. Some of them you have to buy a subscription. It's it's not super expensive. Um, I, I think it's probably worth it. Um, during COVID last year, Tableau actually provided e-learning for free for a period of time. Um, 
and so you know we jumped in there because it was free and and, and started uh, to 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 learn. Um, so you can kind of see there. I I did um, ten badges. Um, those are the the what are they hexagons. Um, so I, you know you go through and you do the uh, you do the learning material, you learn the content, and at the end, they, they give you a little quiz, and then you get a little badge that you can put onto your, your LinkedIn profile. Um, so, you know, it, it becomes a little bit of a gamified thing. Um, it's, it's, it's quite good, um, that content, and, and I highly recommend it. The other thing is, if you have questions about any of this stuff, I'm, I'm happy to, like, you know, have a conversation anytime, um, you know, or debate sometimes on, on how the server should be best set up. It's 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 always good nerdy conversations to have um, that kind of thing. Um, so you know if you if you do have questions, for sure reach out and, and we can we can chat. Um, but that's kind of a, a quick uh, quick little talk on governance. Um, I wanted to turn it up and open it up a little bit, maybe if uh, if people have any questions uh, and and want me to like get into anything more or there's something that. Uh, you'd want answered maybe uh you can is it uh i don't know hints is it using the chat and and uh yeah i just put question. a message in there yeah i just put a message in there just to, if anybody was or has a question just use the chat box there used to be a q a thing but i don't know what happened to it so we're just going to use the chat box for now Thoughts on, okay. Corey said, thoughts on nested projects with respect to security. Um, so here, let me, let me, uh, I, I de-shared my screen, so I'm gonna reshare my screen here. And then of course, when I hide my, hid my screen, I don't know, can you, can you, Give me the question again, Hans. I can't see the, the yeah. chat anymore. Thoughts on nested project with respect to security, and then a follow up with a: Would you break inheritance for sub projects or try to stay away from that? I would try to stay away from breaking inheritance. So let me show you guys I, I, um, what we're what we're talking about here. So, like, you know, this is this is. Um, this is just our, our kind of our play server that we have. So, you know, I, I created a project here, top level called executive. And then you can go in here and, and uh, in your permissions screen, you can say, you know, I want uh, the executive group. Well, first I'm gonna say all users have no access to this. Um, one of the things to kind of keep in mind here is if you say denied, that just denies everybody access except for server administrators. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna say none. Um, and then pick the group and, and assign the appropriate permissions. So that's the basic part of it. The, the second piece here is this lock. So, um, you know, what you would do is you can either say customizable, which means that it can be just changed, you know, it'll default to whatever you've specified here, but it can still be changed um, on sub processes, or sorry, sub projects or you know, the workbooks or the data sources that are published into the project. What I, what I would say is you know, keep it locked. If, if, you, if you can keep it locked, apply it to nested projects. And then if you kind of go into any of the stuff that's published in here. So if I, if I look at this, uh, this workbook and I go to permissions, you'll just see that it says it's, it's locked to the parent project. So people can't mess with it. Um, it, it, it just helps keep it a little bit more organized that way. Um, you know, and, and if people want to, to have it done otherwise, I'd say like, let's have a conversation and, and see like, you know, uh, should we be creating a new top level project? Could this be handled by creating a new security group and just like adding more users into that security group and, and splitting the access th this way? Um, you know, we, we had one client that uh, they, they wanted their board of directors to be able to come in to their Tableau server and, and see certain things, but not other things. Um, so we, we embarked upon this uh, probably not recommended 
uh, route of creating a project for board of directors, limiting them only to their project and then publishing specific views uh, into that project. And so now, you know, whenever those views get changed in, in the other projects throughout their Tableau site, they have to remember to go copy and publish a copy into board of directors where applicable. So it just adds to the, the, the administration overhead. Um, so I, I, I'd say try to keep it, try to keep it simple if, if you can, don't overthink it to start with because then you might have to do more refactoring later. Um, but try to, you know, at, at the same point in time, at the same time, just try to have that plan. Think about that plan, right? That's that's the idea with Blueprint. You wanna get that plan in place um, to, to, to work from. Hopefully that somewhat answers the question. Any other questions? Give a few more minutes, Let's see if anybody has additional questions. I was hoping to throw some cool dashboard stuff, but we don't really have anything. Hit, hit. We had some uh, cool mapping that we were working on and uh, we can't actually show that because of, of confidentiality, but uh, it's uh, some of the new mapping features in, in Tableau, there's there's some neat stuff in there. And so hopefully we'll be able to share that at a future date. Like we'll, we'll just make a, you know, anonymous version of the dashboard and be able to show you that to you guys. Oh, another question here. What type of a uh, user role uh, can grant or revoke permissions? So there's there's kind of um, when you're setting up your users, you have um, you have your um, your idea of. Uh, um, there's the license that you're assigning to users. So it's either you know, a creator, an explorer, or a viewer. Um, but within um, explorer and creator, you also have this option of site administrator. So um, let me, uh, there. let me see, I, I keep unsharing my screen and then having to reshare it. So I'll just uh, I'll show you uh, in the user um, in the user list here. Um, you could specify their site role. Um, so you'll see that the options here like creator versus site administrator creator. Um, so the um, if you just hover on this little info, uh, it gives you that nice little grid there that tells you kind of what uh, the different roles can do. The difference with the um, site administrators is that basically they can they can kind of manage everything on the site so if, if you give someone that site administrator um role they can they can do everything they can set up permissions they can view everything regardless of the permissions they're kind of like your your god users um so you know what we're we're doing is um basically um you know, we want to limit the number of people that are in that site administrator role. Even if you have creators, um, what we've we've done in some cases is we've actually like set up a you know testing project in a testing area, like as a sandbox. So the creators, uh, we basically specify that the, they can only publish um, their data sources into that testing area because um, we don't want them to like necessarily overwrite a, a production one. But uh, when you're setting up your permissions, um, you can basically, um, you know, in terms of like data sources, you can say, you know, whether they can publish or not, whether they're allowed to administer. So you can delegate the administration. Um, so you could say, you know, for in this case here, I want my executive uh, group to be able to administer data sources within this project. So you can delegate some of that without making, you know, users a full uh, site administrator. We'll give a, <clears throat> another minute Let's just see if anybody else has any other questions. Oh, there you go. Unlicensed. What would the site role unlicensed have access? Haha. <laughs> so unlicensed, that means uh, basically they are, um, 
the the unlicensed user is is kind of reserved for for cases where you've added somebody to your tableau server probably in a explorer or creator role and they've published content but now you want to remove them so if they left the company say um, you can't actually remove them outright because they've published content so you have to switch them to unlicensed um, one of the things that we would recommend doing is actually looking at what that user published like say if, if it's somebody that left the company and they published a bunch of data sources they'll be set as the owner on those data sources and you may want to update the owner and set it to a different user um, just because if, if you know you're doing extracts and they're failing that's it, it'll notify that owner um, so you may want to switch the, the ownership um, and then you'd be able to if you if you go in and, and find all the you know Fraser left the company today so Hins can go in and um, you know find everything that I've published, switch the owner on it, and then he'd be able to remove me entirely. So you won't need un unlicensed. Um, if it wasn't important to kind of clean that up, uh, you could just set the user to unlicensed and they would still show up as the owner. Um, so that's what that one is for, handling that kind of situation. Can you have admin uh, just to manage users but not see content? I do not think so. I'm, I'm pretty sure like if, you, if you're like a site administrator, you're able to basically see all the content and you, and you need to be able to, to be a site administrator to, to manage the users on the site. All right, uh, just give, let's say one more minute. It seems like a flow last, of questions. Last question? Yeah, all last right. questions. <laughs> Oh, there you go. I had a few projects that were managed in my absence by other analysts by downloading the workbooks and broke the link between them and the one that published to the server. Is there a way to restrict changes regarding this? You can restrict, uh, maybe if I'm reading it correct, um, you can restrict the ability to download. So um, one of the permissions, uh, here, let me show you this again. See, every time, every time I have to reshare my screen, sorry. Um, so in the workbooks here, um, you can see that um, when you when you add a group in here and I, and I say publish like so I, you know I want to allow this this group to publish um, it, it just checks off a bunch by default um, and then there's a bunch of icons here but uh, on your on your workbooks uh, section here you can um, which one is it here so there's there's a couple different permissions here. One is shared customized, so that's where they they can do like the web edit um, and share share a copy of that. Um, so like you can enable web edit. Um, this is download save a copy of the workbook. So you can actually deny that, um, so that you know you can have users kind of come in here and and do like a save as and, and web edit, but they can't get a full copy. Um, and and you can deny overwrite. So it's these two options here to overwrite your workbooks um, or download a copy of the workbook. So you can turn those off. Um, they, they've gotten um, a little bit more fine grain recently, like as to what you can specify in here, um, what users can do. It used to be a little bit more high level, um, but you can you can be quite detailed here on what individual users are allowed to do uh, when you're setting up the permissions. What's the difference between deny and null in those permissions? Deny is like an explicit deny and a, a null is kind of like unspecified. So if, if you had like, you know, the case where um, a user was a member of three different groups, if, if you don't specify and they're allowed in one of those three groups, then they're allowed. But if you say deny in any of those groups, it'll be denied across the board. Okay. All right. <laughs> like I said, email, you know, feel free to email anytime. Um, we can hopefully answer these questions uh, fairly mm -hmm. quickly if, if people have them. We don't mind uh, doing that. Uh, 
it's uh, it's 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 always good to like uh, have someone to to be able to rely on for these kind of things. So. Okay, last question because I'm I'm gonna have to bring off here pretty quickly. Um, when when you open an old Tableau workbook, uh, what what that's connected to a published data source, uh, will it try to update? Uh, how can we have it stay just as is when it was saved as a Tableau? I I'm not sure why. Yeah, if you're if you're opening a workbook that was created in like an old version of Tableau, in a newer version of Tableau, yes, yeah, so it'll it'll always kind of try to update. Um, if you don't want it to update, sadly, um, probably the the easiest thing is to just have two copies of Tableau on your desktop. I I actually have like, I think four different versions of Tableau desktop installed right now. Um, because of clients that have servers that are running older versions uh, of Tableau. So we, we have like, you know, Tableau desktop installed to match what's installed on the server. Um, so good and bad, I guess that Tableau lets you install multiple versions. But if you, if you didn't want your workbook to update, you should have uh, kind of the, the best way is to just have multiple copies of Tableau installed and then open um, the workbook in whatever version you want it to be staying in. Can you answer Katie's last uh, question before you go? Uh, sure, if there are two boxes you showed are not denied, would they be able to change making changes on the published work? Uh, if, if you don't allow, um, if you don't allow, if you deny like the overwrite, um, then they'll, they would only be able to like, um, they'd be able to do a web edit potentially, but not be able to save it. Um, so you can effectively like um, not let them overwrite. Um, one of the things that uh, is coming, I think, Hins, maybe you know um, and can answer it. One of the things that, uh, they, that was mentioned um, in an upcoming release, maybe the Tableau people will know too, um, the, there, uh, there was talk about having user uh, like scratch spaces that were like specific to users coming in a future release, um, which might actually solve some of that. Um, you know, we've managed it up till now by setting up like projects for users so that they can save stuff to that's kind of their own project. Um, but it, you know, everybody that has you know appropriate permissions can see those things on the server, um, which is not necessarily clean. So that might also help. I'm I'm wondering um, to just keep users kind of in their sandbox and not uh, let them make changes to stuff that's been published. We can we can follow up and if 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 you have more questions, then we can clarify. Right. Thanks, Fraser. I'm gonna take over right. this the screen here and uh, let's do a little Kahoot exercise. Uh, did that just work? Yes. Okay. So if you guys have not uh, used Kahoot before, you can um, go to, I think, playkahoot.it up here and then just enter this game pin. And uh, we just have five questions uh, just for a little bit of interactivity. It's like a little bit of a quiz. Not too hard. So I'll let people join in on that. Just give uh, two more minutes to get everybody like, an opportunity to join if they want to.
Okay, we'll give one more minute. Okay, give it 30 more seconds. Okay, we'll start. We got 12 people. Um, that's okay. So, so the question will show up and then you kind of answer based on the corresponding color or shape. So first question, where is the Tableau headquarters? Is it Mountain View, Seattle, New York, or Houston? Okay. Unfortunately, I, I, I don't give you 10 seconds. Uh, my apologies if you needed more. <laughs> Second question, what US state did Onward expand to? Texas, California, New York, or Washington? The answer is Texas. Good job, Mike, T and Adam. Third is, what are the three core capabilities at the heart of every data-driven organization? How should you assign user permissions to content on Tableau? Individually or functional? All right, last question. Good job, Adam, I see you're on fire. Who is the current CEO of Tableau? All right. So that's that's it. I sorry, I, we had looks seemed we had some technical difficulties. Uh, we'll tune it for the next one. My apologies. So the third place was Mike, second place was Adam, and first place was T. Uh, if you three can reach out to me um, through email, I have a little bit of a prize for you. I'm just gonna put my email into the chat. All right. Okay, so we're not gonna take a break just because uh, Tableau, the Tableau met new members will just have a few uh, introductory comments to make, and then I think we can uh, end this early. So I'll give it to uh, Shaw and uh, Katie, I think, to finish it off here. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. <laughs> there we go. Usually helps when I unmute myself. It's, uh, it's always helpful. <laughs> So uh, yeah, just wanted to say a quick hello to everyone. Uh, so my name is Katie Hawley, uh, started at Tableau just back in November. So um, I'm based uh, just outside of Vancouver and covering Western Canada uh, on the public sector side of Tableau. So um, anyone that's kind of at either a academic institution um, involved in the healthcare space or in the core government space, um, that would be myself. So. 
uh, just kind of joining all the different Tableau user groups. Uh, we've got a really great one that uh, happens out in Vancouver as well. Um, I know there's a great group in Calgary and you guys in Edmonton. So just wanted to, you know, quickly pop in and say hello. Um, I'm kind of the, uh, you know, first point of contact when it comes to anything sales related, um, any questions around products um, and licensing questions. Um, and then I work alongside a solutions engineer uh, who is also on this call. His name is Shaw. So um, I'll have Shaw introduce himself as well, but we really just wanted to say hello to kind of this community um, and uh, introduce ourselves. So while Shaw's saying hello, I'll go ahead and put our emails in the chat. Um, you know, and feel free to reach out to us if there's anything we can be helping with. Uh, so Shaw, I'll pass that over to you. Cool, thanks Katie. And it's my first time on this call. Nice to meet you all. And uh, yeah, I'm Shaw Gill, Lead Solution Engineer at Tableau. Also based, um, I don't, sorry, I also cover Western Canada with Katie. And I'm based out of Vancouver, actually. I just moved here last week. So loving it out here. Loving the West, the West side. And uh, I'm looking forward to joining more of these calls. And, and like Katie, I'm on the account team and I'm more of a technical contact. Uh, things like server architecture, scaling and growth strategies. Uh, bringing you know different Tableau use cases to you so you can leverage them and just set you up for success. Great. Thank you, Katie and Shah, for uh, coming in here and introducing yourselves. Um, uh, I know Katie just entered the, their emails into the chat box, but uh, I hope my screen is, is showing. But here's uh, some emails to reach out uh, um, to reach out to us with. Uh, so. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or um, concerns or anything about Tableau or anything. And if there is nothing else, uh, no questions for Katie or Shah, we can uh, give everybody some time back in their day. Uh, thank you so much again for attending, um, to attending this. Uh, our next Tableau meeting will probably be uh, three months from now or so. Um, and again, we're looking for volunteers to speak as well as uh, anybody that's interested in co-leading this, um, this event. Um, and hopefully as well, we'll be able to meet in person next time, but if not, we'll continue doing these virtually until we are able to meet you know, physically. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for your time and see you later.